Hello YouTube. This video is about the nine social media tips, tricks, strategies, rules, laws, whatever you want to call them that you need as a filmmaker. So let's get going. We're gonna shoot something the other day. So before we get going, I have been getting a ton of emails to repost the link to my training guide, which is a 33 page PDF called how to sell your web series without an agent. Uh, it applies to filmmakers, it applies to content creators, it applies to web series producers and creators. So uh, it covers all of that. It is also the perfect companion for this video. So download that guide. It is going to help you immensely and give you a step-by-step -step process for how to use social media to influence and have impact on the industry. So moving on, social media. We filmmakers have a love-hate relationship with it. Uh, there are so many filmmakers I know that get caught up in I don't want to blow my own horn. I don't want to, you know, sound salesy. Uh, that couldn't be farther from the truth in, in the way that I'm going to be putting forward ideas on how you can use it authentically to get you where you want to go. Um, so we have never lived in a time when you can broadcast to a billion people without asking for permission. Now, of course, you're not gonna get all those billion people, but you're gonna get a chunk of them. And those people are the people that are interested in what you do. So there is no going back. If you are a filmmaker and you are not aggressively using social media right now, you're out of the game. And especially during this crisis with Hollywood not knowing kind of how it's all going to pan out, they're going to do something that is going to get, make Hollywood even more impenetrable. They're going to just go with the people that they know and know very well. The only people they're going to let in are people with audiences. So I want to run through some hardcore tactics and hardcore strategies that you can use and that are abs absolutely necessary for you to kind of hold up your career, uh, to, to be the foundation of your career, because everything is gonna spin from this. So before I get into the list, one of the things I notice about filmmakers, and this was true for me, I mean, I, I, almost cripplingly so, um, I tried to get big while staying small. Don't notice me. I don't want to put my name out there in a way that sounds salesy or that I'm blowing my own horn. And so we have to, as filmmakers, be willing to stand in our own greatness. It is okay that we have confidence in what we do. And it's not that overblown confidence. It's not that kind of pushy confidence. It's actually about pulling people in. It's about being authentic and it's about being, uh, remaining humble to a certain degree, right? And that lures people in rather than you going, watch my stuff, watch my stuff, think about it. You would never go to a party and just start screaming, watch my film, watch my film. It would just, you'd be an oddball and they'd ask you to leave. Uh, so why would we wanna do something like that on social media? Think about it as going to your favorite party and think about it as having conversations with people. So let's get started, number one, know what you make. You cannot give people context about why your work is important if you don't know from where your work comes from, why you make it, and why people should take the time to watch. Because at the end of the day, they're paying you. They are paying you with their time, which is way more valuable than money. So I hire a lot of producers, directors, DPs, writers, and I always ask, especially the producers, what kind of work do you do? And I will get kind of the coverall answer, right? Which is, I can make anything. Well, if you're saying that on social media, um, basically what you're saying is, what do you need me to be so I can grab your attention? And that is gonna flip you up. So when all is said and done, you want to be able to say, 
exactly what you do and it needs to be very focused. You need to be an expert at it. And if you are an expert at something, you can talk about it endlessly and talk about it with passion and talk about it from the heart with authenticity. If you are trying to be an expert at everything, it is gonna be very tough. So know what you make. So number two, marketing and promotion, they are not dirty words. These are not words that you need to be afraid of. We cannot be the kind of people who are not willing to talk about our work. If we're waiting to be discovered, we're gonna be waiting a long time. So we have to create context. So how do we do that? We do that through marketing and promotion. I mean, let's take one of the best marketers in the world. Martin Luther King was amazing at messaging. And that's how he got done what he got done. It was an authentic message. It came from the heart. It was real, but it was on point. It was, it was focused. So marketing and promotion are absolutely necessary in being able to do this. I know too many filmmakers who spend 80% of their time trying to get on set, trying to be on set, right? And I'm sorry, but if that's where you're headed, that's a rough thing. That's maybe 20% of what we do. So why are we spending 80% of the time trying to get 20% of the results? Let's flip that script. Let's spend 80% of the time promoting ourselves so that that 20%, we get paid more, we get hired more, we are easy to collaborate with, people understand and have context for us, and that's what marketing does. It tells our story. It lets people into uh, our own little party. It's, it lets people into who we really are if it's done well. When it's done in a, in a ham-fisted, schlocky way, of course it's horrible and cringeworthy, but that says more about the person than it does about marketing and promotion. Number three, and this is a big one, other filmmakers are not your fans. They are not fans of your work, they are fans of their work. They are not trying to find your work, they are trying to get other people to see their work. So I am begging you, going into Facebook groups that are uh, dedicated to filmmakers and saying, watch my trailer, it's one thing to say, hey, here's how I accomplished this thing, or you know, here's some takeaway you guys can use when you guys move forward in, in your work. Uh, but it is another thing trying to turn them into a fan. It is a waste of your time. There aren't enough filmmakers uh, for you to be able to gather together uh, unless you're teaching them something or unless you are giving them value uh, for you to be able to have them fans of your work. Uh, they're too busy doing their own thing. You want to find that person in Kansas. You want to find that person in, in the middle of Ontario. You want to find that person in the Midlands of England. Because those are the people that are going to dedicate their time to your work. And those are going to be real fans. So remember, don't hunt for scads of filmmakers and say, watch my work, I love you. You can inspire filmmakers, you can show your work to them, but do it for the right reason. You want the public to come to you, not this small cloistered group that only has so many people that would turn into fans. Again, if you're teaching or giving them value or exchanging information, that's a whole other ball of wax. But if you are trying to grow your audience to have impact on the industry, because let's face it, the only reason they're gonna let new people into the industry right now is because they made an impact and social media is the way they're gonna determine whether you made impact. Number four, create a bunch of little things rather than one giant thing when building your career. So many filmmakers go heads down for nine months out of the year making this one big thing and lurching it over the transom and hoping that people find it. And then, I'm sorry, have the audacity to put a Facebook post in a filmmaker group saying, well, it's finally here, the trailer to the thing you never had any idea I was making and have no context for. We, as audience members and as viewers of that, biologically edit that. It's gone, we throw it out the window. We don't even see it because there's so many of them. And the audacious part of that 
is that filmmakers who are doing this feel that a week of social media is going to garner them attention because their work is uh, going to mesmerize us, right? What we have to understand is the internet is filled with beautiful stuff. It is so um, much easier to create beautiful things right now. It is a lot cheaper. When I was coming up, we shot on film. So you were really precious about it, and there were only a few people that could really, uh, you know, make all that film stuff happen. They were these world-class experts that were very expensive. Uh, and now, uh, the most dangerous person to the film industry is the eighth grader in, you know, Idaho, with a video camera, with a DSLR, and and and, and a copy of Premiere. So what I'm asking you to do is make a ton of little things and, and go across people's eyeballs consistently. Go across their screen all the time, right? Like every day. And this is how important this is. This is the linchpin of your career now rests on social media. It sounds obnoxious. Maybe two of you are gonna just randomly get discovered. Those things rely on chance and luck. And I, can't build a business on chance and luck. I have to build it on creating opportunity and saying my message. And again, you do not have to have a million subs, right? You just don't. What you can do is have a deep audience. Maybe it's 10,000 people, but they watch, share, comment, like. They take four or five different actions around your work. So make a ton of little stuff every day and just put it out there. Talk about your ideas, let us into your day, let us into your process. I'm telling you, people love process. I've done stuff where I've just been giving a thought when I'm on an airplane and people will watch it, like to the thousand. So you need to be okay with not always being in production on the big thing. Save that for when it's important and when it's gonna have the most impact. Number five, vulnerability breeds trust. Vulnerability and openness and letting people into your weaker moments and into to the, the, the places of your un insecurity or where you're unsure, makes them feel like they're not alone. And when you allow people in and you bleed a little bit, right, meaning you're kind of coughing up maybe a black lung from your past and letting them in, they all of a sudden realize that your work comes from a much deeper place than just watch my stuff so that I can be famous. That's a pointless objective. That's a result of doing the kind of work I'm asking you to do. But being humble and being vulnerable and saying the truth in a really deep one is going to attach people to you emotionally, not intellectually. People buy with their time and people buy from a place of emotion, right? Nobody is buying a $300 Supreme t-shirt because they thought about it, right? People buy these because they wanna be the kids at the cool table. And that's okay, but, but the reality of it is, is they buy that $300 t-shirt from a place that is emotional. They buy it from their heart to belong to a tribe. So if we can get people to belong to our little clan, right, by making them feel something, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing anyway? Let's make people feel something. Number six, kill the sacred cow. What does that mean? It means take an unpopular stance. If you don't think that an old convention that has been used for years and has ceased to work and really doesn't draw interest anymore, if you think that's a bad idea, say it, right? Or make work that takes a stance that pokes the status quo. Because one, the internet loves that. Two, it puts you in a place where you are uh, defending your territory, right? Where you are defending your ideas, where your ideas have way more weight. So if it is trying to be well liked, right? If, if you want to be liked by everybody, you're going to be loved by nobody. 
I would rather have a smaller group of people who loved what I did than a bunch of people who kind of like what I do and come by maybe every once in a while but don't move the needle for my career and don't move the needle for my business. Number seven, know why you're using social media. There are two reasons why. It's either to impact the industry or to build an audience. And you can do both, but each strategy is different, right? To impact the industry, you're going to talk in those groups. You are going to have conversations in much smaller groups. That is a uh, small group of people. It is, consider it a weird high school party. Uh, and you need to understand that if that's your goal is to make industry connections, then you need to use social media for that. That means like DMing people, right? That's a whole other ball of wax. But if you are here to build an audience and sort of say to the industry, people are interested in my work and here's the proof for it. Here's the social proof for my work. Then that's another strategy. And that is what we're talking about here today. In the latter, in trying to build the audience, they really do connect with you before they connect with your work. And if they connect with you on an emotional level, they are so much more committed to your work. They watch it for longer periods of time. They come back more frequently, right? So be sure that uh, you know exactly which reason you're doing it for. Now, I think you can do both of these, right? I think you should be DMing people in the industry, and I think you should be creating an emotional connection with that kid in Kansas. Number eight, add value to your audience. Give them something in every video you make, every post you write, every article you guest post on. Ha know kind of in a way what they struggle with, right? Know what their pain is and then make things, make social media content that addresses those little pains and hopes and dreams, right? Because then it seems like you're talking directly to them. It seems like you read their minds. Like they go, how did that person know my secret? And if you are talking with them in that regard, they're gonna be so connected. And then when you give them something that they can do today to make their lives better, because of the ideas that you talk about in your films and in your web series and whatever content you're creating, because if you make them feel something and they connect to you and you have that honest conversation with them and you understand what their hopes, fears, and dreams are, they're gonna connect to you because you're a source of almost relief to them, right? And that makes your work that much more important to them. So they're gonna watch more of your content, they're gonna watch it for longer periods of time, they're gonna come back and see what's new more often. And so adding value to their life, feeling like they get something from you. If you can give them more than you're asking from them, you're gonna win this every time. So number eight, quality above all. It used to be where quantity was the winning formula. Uh, well, that has changed and changed very quickly. It was just a few months ago that I was making videos saying quantity, quantity, quantity. I wasn't saying don't make quality, but now you have to provide both. But if you can't do it frequently, do it great. And so that means tipping over the apple cart, right? That means saying something important. That means killing the sacred cow. That means doing something in a way that both looks amazing, but the idea behind it is super structured and super understandable. So I say right now, really focus on quality, really focus on uh, understanding why you're saying what you're saying and doing it in a highly professional way. We're filmmakers, we use cameras every day, we use all of that stuff, and we get to tell stories using some equipment that are the most powerful tools of, in history to communicate with. So why not try to employ your amazing filmmaking technique to how you're communicating your ideas? So you need to understand that if you can create that context by creating quality stuff, people will follow. <laughs>so when you just saw me looking down at my phone that was me realizing i was going to be late for my haircut so here you go so let's light this clam bake finally be everywhere what does that mean 
When you make one piece of online content, that is an asset. It actually has value. So why only post it in one place? You want to post it across every single social network you can think of. Uh, I'm talking Medium, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them, LinkedIn. Um, these, this gives the impression to the viewer because they're hopping from place to place too. This gives them the impression that you are everywhere. And the more times they see your name, the more trust is built and the more kind of just you become part of their every day. And what does that translate to? Some people call it fame. I call it attention and not the kind of attention that nine-year-olds want. I'm talking about getting the attention for your work and having people spend time with you for longer and longer periods of time. So if they're constantly seeing your name come across their desk and their eyeballs, right? You all of a sudden become a fixture in their life. So being everywhere is super, super important. So I hope this has helped. Don't forget to download the training guide, how to sell your web series without an agent. It is a great companion piece for this video. It's going to give you a step-by-step -step way of doing exactly the things I just talked about. So don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little notification button so you get notified of upcoming videos. And I can't wait to see you in the next one and I'm talking to you. 